Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Drawn to Life. Uh, hi, Wilfra. Oh. You're persistent, I'll give you that. Why do you continue to help these... things? You're powerful. They don't deserve your help. No matter. It's almost time. I think that's the first time we've seen Wilfra in any of the things referenced in the entirety of World 3. They kind of forgot you existed for the entire world. Sorry about that, dude. Either way, time for boss number three, the Angler King. Which... is probably my second favorite boss fight in the game. But I hate this first section. Similarly to Deadwood, honestly, in that fact. Oh, God. Creepy. I am the Angler King. You dare invade my realm? Phase one is just you running away from this guy. Also, I can tell for a fact, yeah, the, the, each boss theme is in fact a different remix of the same theme. Okay, good, I remember that correctly. Uh, the first section of the Angler King is just you running away from him. And I can't tell if it's faster to stay on the ground and run and then try and swim otherwise, but I, 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 I take a lot of dumb hits in this fight, so I guess that's what they intend you to do is just be constantly swimming. I always thought that running was slightly faster underwater, and you, you definitely gain speed when you're descending like that, but you can take a lot of easy hits here. In fact, I have died here several times in the past. Uh, I don't like this section because of that, because I, I, I cannot tell how you're supposed to get through it without taking a hit. <laughs> it gets real close at the end there, too, as you can see. And now we're on to phase two, much more uh, quickly than either of the first two bosses, actually, if I think about it. Got you now. Phase 2 starts off with the Angler King coming into the center and spawning several Shadowfish. There are a couple ways you can get rid of them. You can either shoot your obvious Starzooka at them, they'll take two shots, or you can actually head up to the top of the water because there actually is a top, it's where the Raposa for this boss fight is, and jump out of it and jump on them. After that, the Angler King will come back in running through one of three different uh, jets, uh, currents, that's the word, and it's very easy to get hit here if you're not paying attention. And you can hit him during this. However, upon doing the third one, he'll actually come into the main part of the screen and try and chase you around. This is where you get a lot of your damage in. Angler King is a boss you can actually damage anytime he's on screen. However, to compensate for that, he actually has the most health out of basically any of the bosses with the exception of one later down the road. The Raposa will throw down hearts and ammo as with previous ones, but the best way to go through this fight, reach a good position, and spam fire. He has very little invincibility frames, he's very easy to damage. I believe at this point he's actually about to start looping into his other half of the pattern, yep. Uh, I believe it takes two volleys of him going back and forth three times, followed by him staying in the center for him to summon more Shadowfish. So you have some time before he goes back to doing that, I believe. You can damage the Angler King very easy. In fact, I dare say because of this, when you reach phase two, I think he might actually be the easiest boss in the game. But you still need to watch out because it can be very easy to take uh, to get damaged during the either phase. So uh, is this guy just gonna drown? Oh no, actually. Oh, that's incredibly morbid. Jesus. <laughs> we all right killed this guy. Why did Deadwood get to live then? Because we purified him of the darkness, I guess. Count Chaco. Blah! The Bartby has rescued me! Um, please don't scare anyone, okay? I'm starving. The shopkeep have tomato juice. Oh, uh, tomato juice, huh? <laughs> you can ask him. Blah, I will! Ah, generic vampire, possibly named after a cereal. I hope Count Choco doesn't scare the villagers. You stopped the Angler King? The Angler King was tough. Piece of filet. Honestly, yeah, I guess this was more of a piece of filet. I figured you could handle it. Could you follow Count Choco? I'm worried he'll cause trouble. Check near Isaac's shop. All right, let's head on over there. Hello? Oh, there you two are. Ah, I want some tomato juice. Uh, sure. Um, no rapper coins? Blah. I don't know such a thing. I will give you this. Blah, I must go and feed. 
What did he give you? Uh, Bartleby, you should come see this. What a strange vampire. He traded me this page for some tomato juice. I don't have a use for it. I'll sell it to you for 100 Rappo coins. Eh, I guess you can have it for free. You've been a good customer. The mayor can put it back in the Book of Life. Why he had a Book of Life page, I don't know. Other than basically pattern at this point. But the mayor's still up here. Chucko had a page in the Book of Life. How strange. Let me have a look. The page is for a cow in Berry Bush. Dangerous, but they could be useful. Bartley, I'll meet you at the north of the village snow gates. We'll ask the creator to draw and plant some cow in Berry Bushes. All right, cool. Let's head on over there. Uh, it's actually directly south of us right now, too, so... Pretty easy to get there. Here he is. This looks like a good spot. Creator, could you draw and plant some cow in Berry Bushes? And similarly to the Cory trees and the Banya... You're not given an indication of what that would look like, so I'm basically look like a bush that has raspberries in it. I also gave it some dirt because something I noticed when I made the banya, as well as the uh, kori trees, I probably could have added something to the bottom to make it blend better with the sand or dirt that it's supposed to be in. So that's the little dirt mound beneath it to kind of give it some groundment, uh, grounding rather. Uh, shading is equal across basically. It's not the best, but it will do what it needs to do. Uh, you can only place it on that dark patch of soil, though, so better or less, your cause, you're, you're supposed to just put them in a straight line, which, yeah, it's fine, I guess. I need to speak with Samuel. The Cory berries can be dangerous if used improperly. Can you find Samuel and ask him to meet me at the village hall? You should check near the village forest gates. In fact, that's where he's been, I believe, uh, forever, really. Uh, when you rescue an NPC that's from a, uh, boss fight, they generally stick near their, uh, gate. The mayor wishes to see me. Very well. I'll see you at the village hall. Because, uh, Samuel's here. I think Count Chaco stays near the, uh, island gate. Heather's like the one exception, and even then, she's still relatively close to it due to the fact she's mostly at Joey's house, more or less. Or at least she generally sticks close to Joey, I suppose, is the better way to say that. If Bartleby eats a cow and berry, he'll double in size, but the effect is temporary. Temporary or not, he won't stand a chance in Rappoville without it. Bartleby! There is only one section of the village covered in darkness. The village gate leads to Wilfra. That village gate, rather. Tap the Eternal Flame, and I'll meet you by the Northeastern Path. Well, after forgetting him for a good world, we're trying to go after the guy, huh? Yeah, I guess that's kind of the weird thing about this game's storyline. With maybe one or two passing mentions that I might be forgetting about aside, during the entirety of World 3, Wilfra is basically a passing thought. Only until you get towards World 4 here, where he becomes the main focus again, which is kind of weird story pacing there. Either way, we need to clear the village, uh, the darkness from the village northeastern path, which I believe is also, if not the last time, we need to really clear the dark darkness around an area. It's like one of the two last times. Our village is almost free from the darkness. Creator, can you clear the darkness from the northeast pass? That path. Sure thing. Tap 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 tap. Ah, the final section of our village. It's been a long time since I've seen the Rappoville World Gate. Let's take a look around. I don't know why I was hesitating so long in those. Maybe I was... You know what? My voice may have been changing slowly for this character, so I may be able to read him as faster. Alright. I saw that. Ah, oh, crap. They're getting too close. I can't risk them finding me. Not before the task is finished. That was weird. You saw Wilfra enter that gate? And the fact that it's not filled in or colored is scary. Mm, this door has no color. We'll need the secret door page from the Book of Life. And then we can enter and stop Wilfra. Bartleby, enter Rappo City and secure the secret door page. The Cowrin Berry that you ate should take effect once you're in Rappo City. 
And that's we have our next objective. You actually cannot use this gate at all right now, but fun fact, even though it's not colored in here, this gate does actually have a sprite that's filled in in the game's files, and it looks more or less like every other gate, only it's very solemn at the same time. But that said, though, time for our final world, World 4. And for once, we're actually doing two levels in one part. Holy hell. But our first destination is Rappo City. As soon as I walk left. And Rappo City's gimmick is interesting. We're huge due to the Calrin Berry. Because of that, we're going to have some interesting things going on here. You don't actually get a weapon in this place until later on. More on that when we get there. And the first thing we have to draw is a boulder we have to push to press switches. Now, you see, if we were Chris Redfield, we could push this thing without having to be huge. Uh, but I'm more or less applying more of the same shiny techniques I did on the beach ball here. But I'm adding some dark blue stuff to kind of just add to the depth and rockiness. I don't know how to really draw rocks, though, especially when they have to be completely circular like this wants it to be. So let's push this around with the, I think you use the Y button for this. It might be the X button, I forget. And then it'll land on switches that causes part of the land to raise. And that Raposa is huge if it's that size compared to me. Holy hell. Our young Rappo. It, Mike looks weird. Mike, that's a, a Heather aside. That's a very standard name, huh? Almost every enemy in here that took more than one shot beforehand, with the exception of Baki Towers, will now take one shot to our increased size. Like, we have, when we eventually come across Shadow Walkers, they'll go down in one shot. However, they're still go around, and it more or less raises and lowers in the exact same percentage as it normally would. I don't like that dance, because we get dangerously close to tripping and falling on our face. But this is like the one time in the game where you're so close to your player character that you can actually see some of the details you want to put on. Uh, like now you can actually see the little smiley face I gave Bartleby. With that said though, World 4 has my favorite music in the game. No matter what song it is, I love World 4's soundtrack. They get suitably solemn due to the fact we're getting close to the end of the game, but it's also really just catchy and kick-ass. Especially that guitar in the background here. Oh, that's nice. This is also probably the most modern aesthetic we'll see until I believe Drawn to Life 2, where they get some modern stuff in there. Like, we're seeing fire hydrants and barrels. It's weird looking. Also, we also get, I think it's technically a double Baki uh, stack there, which is four, which allows you to get a total combo of, I think, upwards of eight, which is really good. Like I said, they could have used more opportunities like that to make you feel good about yourself with a large combo opportunity, but they don't really give you a chance to do so until the final world. With that said, though, beyond the increased damage, uh, the increased size of the Coward and Barry doesn't really do anything, since you don't have any extra abilities aside from uh, a little kick that you just saw me do. That will now damage enemies. Uh, that's the equivalent to a gun you get in this, and it's kind of useless. In fact, the dash ability, the flip ability, even the slide is theoretically more useful when you're giant like this. In fact, the slide, I think, actually might have more range than the kick, which is sad to say. You also finally get to see some good detail in the mannequin model and realize how little there actually is to it. And now we need to draw a Zeppelin to ride on. Uh, I'm actually basing this off of a Zeppelin slash blimp that used to ride around near my elementary school, weirdly enough. We used to look up when we were like in the outdoor gym classes and see this thing. I don't know what it was for or what it was supposed to be advertising, but yeah, it was there. And that's about it. That, that's actually all I really need to do in terms of the coloring, too, because there's not much to shading something like that. You do need to get on the Zeppelins, though. They're essentially, uh, I guess, bigger versions of the moving clouds. Uh, even though they all... because I, Although I think all these ones move automatically. And they're all fairly easy to see slash get on because their hitboxes are pretty big. Oh, yeah, that's the thing I have. You have a minor uppercut ability that doesn't really do anything. Whoa, you look... Uh, I guess you're the mic that one kid was talking about? You don't look like a Raposa. What the hell? Why does everyone look so weird? Good question. Although at the moment, you seem like the weird one here, Mike. Eh. Well, I'm sure that's not important, really. Because at the moment, we really have other things to focus on. Also, I just really noticed how weird our knee looks when we bend down. Like I said, this game's sprites are well animated, and all things considered, they did a good job with the player avatar. 
but when you're the mannequin in particular, it looks really weird. Like, next time I kneel down, take a look at the outer leg in the way it bends. Oh, even the way it bends when you jump is kind of gross looking. I think it's because, technically speaking, uh, the pelvic area ends a chunk into the leg, which means bending just looks weird. Also, what's up here? I think there might be a temple page up here, actually. Te page fragment, whatever. Ooh, big Baki. These guys take three shots. I've oh, no, it's only two shots. So, basically, they're just Bakis sized up like we are. I kind of wish that touching an enemy in this case would actually do less damage somehow, but I don't know how they would exactly implement that given the game's health system. Hmm. Also, I'm having trouble jumping on these Zeppelins for some reason. Also, just notice... The shading on the actual, like, blue part of the Zeppelin looks kind of weird when it's zoomed out like that. Or, yeah, no, zoomed out is like that. Eh. Uh, something that I'm very glad this game doesn't do much is that, more often than not, the jumps are very doable, even with your standard jump. Also, I died, so, yeah. We're, we're actually cutting back down below that entire area before I went up a Zeppelin. Because it's to the right we need to progress. Progress, rather. Not progress. That's weird implementation of grammar and pronunciation. Look at the cute little shadow walkers. They, they, they walk so cute when they're small like that. Well, I guess, technically, they're not small. I'm just huge. Now, one thing that always kind of bothered me about the Dark Knight skin, admittedly, and that you can only really see when you're zoomed in, apparently the horns are the slightest bit yellow. And that just looks weird. If I were to have customized the horns on Bartleby's character template, I probably would have made them white and gray to give them more of an ivory look. Uh, but then again, I might have also had to change little uh, cuffs and boot tops to kind of match that, because that's they, they have the exact same color palette there. Hmm. Also, I should mention... Uh, this level's kind of long. Uh, World 4, I don't think is the longest levels, but, uh, they get a bit longer because, you know, we're reaching the end. Fill in this crumbling pillar. Alright, now what I do for this is I basically draw a Roman pillar on its side, but what this thing acts is, is not actually as a pillar. Uh, this crumbling pillar is actually closer to being a, uh, what's it called? Seesaw. Uh, you get on one end and the other raises up. And thus you need to, uh, use that appropriately to get around. Uh, this is actually where they start getting kind of good with their platforming, that there's actual platforming challenges. Like, you're gonna be over bottomless pits doing some stuff and such. Now, if only they had done this a bit earlier in the game, because then I would have been really satisfied with it. Or at least with the actual platforming elements. And jump, and there it goes. Uh, you generally need to jump on one side anyway to actually make it work as a staircase that, like, I need to use it there as. Use it as there, rather. So you need to keep that in mind. But that said, though, it is kind of a hard thing to shake. Also, there's a song token down here, so grab that. And now I need to wait for that Zeppelin to come back down. Platforming! Also, I have to admit, when it's zoomed out like this, the, the, the really crappy chainmail edit I also made to this uh, template actually works pretty well, at least from this distance, because it actually looks like chainmail. I wish it could have been a more even spread, but I guess at the same time, the more organic nature might help with this. Okay, this is, I think, the strongest normal enemy in the game, in that he takes three shots, which is also usually the highest as it is. But he will actively charge at you when, if you're not paying attention, so you need to be careful. Although, I do need to backtrack for a moment and actually go up that Zeppelin we saw, because I believe there's a page fragment up there, or is it the other Raposa? Something important either way. Hello, big rat, uh, rappy. Raposa and Baki, together in union. Ah, uh, no, big Baki. Oh, come on. I Only I should be able to stand on that. And let's see, what was it? It was a boulder that I needed to push. Which led to a... A... Oh, it is a page fragment. Good. So you do need to come up here no matter what. Okay, then. Admittedly, again, I kind of wish they had done something with the boulders that was a bit more interesting, like, 
had you had to go through a minor platforming puzzle to get them to a switch in order to get one of the, like, maybe an ability token or something, because that could have led to more of a brain teaser kind of thing. But this game is very low on puzzle elements. Which sends me, because I could like, I would like to see how puzzle elements in this kind of game could work, but we don't really get to see much of that, if any, really, aside from teasing your brain to figure out what you want to draw, which is a decent uh, brain exercise, don't get me wrong, but some things could work out so much better. Also, I haven't really commented on, on it yet, but I actually really like the way that this template looks when you lose either your arms or your legs, or at least in terms of, like, hit one or hit two. So it looks like you're just suddenly, like, taking a t-shirt with it, or you're in, like, a bathing suit of some sort. It's 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 visually humorous to me. Like, look at that. That, that, that just looks like I'm wearing shorts. That's funny. Oh, boy, we're drawing again already. What do we have to draw now? Oh, God, no, I don't want to deal with that. That guy can also stun you, which is something I forget about fairly often. Jaw a, jaw a giant tree. Draw a giant tree. Uh, this is going to act sort of as a trampoline. Uh, these things are always going to be in an angle. They'll bounce you the opposite direction. Like, say, if I were to jump on this one the way it is currently facing, it would bounce me up into the right. Uh, I'm actually going out of my way to give this thing some usual shading, but beyond that, it's more or less just another piece of green and orange, and I'm shading it like a lot of the others I have. I probably could have gone a bit more in detail with that, but... Eh. Hey, dick. See? That works really well. Uh, I think you technically skip some coins by doing that if you, like, don't hold the button or something, but oh well. Also, you want to actually go back up that Zeppelin if you fell down like I did, because the last repose is up there. But I'm heading, I think, left for the... Uh, I want to say it's the last secret token, if anything. Uh, no, it's the last page fragment. So yeah, very much do that. And now I need to wait for the Zeppelin. Which is a very old-fashioned sentence. <laughs> well, not that Zeppelins and blimps don't, like, exist nowadays, but I, I I don't think I've actually seen any news about a blimp since the whole Balloon Boy fiasco in, like... What was that? 2010? I need to look this up. Uh, Balloon Boy hoax. 2009, so actually I was pretty close to it. And a rapo girl. Where did Mike's ears go? He had them, didn't he? I mean, he wasn't a Raposa, clearly, but he had something on the right, left and right of his head. Ah, man, the Balloon Boy hoax. I remember hearing about that back in, uh, let's see, 2009. That would have been, I think, 7th grade? Roughly? Which, ah, simpler times. I know I mentioned this before, not worse times for the world, technically speaking. Albeit we didn't have an idiot as president. <clears throat> I won't get too political, though. But much simpler times for me because I didn't have to worry about things. And we're done with the level. Uh, Rapo City is a very interesting level because the, I like the idea that we're going to have for the first bit of World 4 where we are giant because it doesn't persist through the entire world, sadly. And I like the ability... I, I like the things we draw because they're very creative and things you wouldn't think to use as what they're used for, given the size difference. Like, I would never think to use a tree as a trampoline. Of sorts, at least. And we're almost done with Raposa. I have actually said that for the past four parts in a row, haven't I? But still, that's another 100 Rappo coins, and we can head back to the village with that secret gate page in hand. Hey, Mari. Hi... What's your name? And what happened to your ears? My name is my- Wait, there's nothing wrong with my ears! I'm not even sure where I am! Uh, so where am I? This is our village. I'm Mari. You should see my dad. He's the mayor. Maybe he can figure out what happened to your ears. This must be a dream. Okay, that's weird. Hi, Bartleby. Where did you find that strange-looking Raposa? I think it's a human. What happened to his ear? Where the hell did- have they... They've never even mentioned the word human. What the hell? Uh, human? Is that like a type of Baki? Is he dangerous? He seemed nice. Bartleby, you should see if my dad can fix his ears. Well, it... 
that's kind of inconsistent, because why have we never seen a human beforehand, then? Either way, uh, with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 17, we'll be not only reporting back to the mayor with the secret gate page, but seeing where the plot takes us after that. See you guys, then.